Alrighty guys, so today we are out literally five minutes from my house by quad ride and I'm going to be shooting the stars rising over a tree in that direction. So this is kind of backyard astrophotography if you will. <sighs> guys, as you can see we are sporting the Manfrotto 190X. This is the new tripod, I just picked it up. Uh, ooh, what did I pick it up? I picked it up last Tuesday and uh, it has been just an absolute beast of a tripod and I love the absolute heck out of this thing um yeah guys so if you're into the market for a tripod the uh manfrotto 190 190 with the x pro 4 ball head on it is definitely a setup you want to go with All right, guys, so for the, the kind of the shot idea is I have, uh, I don't know if you can see it, but I have this leading line here. It points right to this tree, and this tree points right up into the sky. And what I'm going to hopefully do later tonight is I'm going to come back out here um, around probably 9 o'clock at night and shoot the stars. Hopefully the moon will rise from that direction over there. I'm going to be shooting the landscape over here. Hopefully I'll shoot the landscape before the moon rises as that kind of gives it a different look, a look that I don't want. I just want a kind of astrophotography look with the uh, foreground being completely, completely uh, starlit. I am shooting on the Rokinon 24mm f1.4 Nikon D750 with the MD B16 battery grip um, and my Photo 190 tripod and X Pro 4 ball head. That is pretty much all we're doing. We have a 16 gigabyte SD card in there, but nobody wants to know about that. All I gotta do is gonna wait out here for a couple hours with the quad camera and uh, get some cool stuff later tonight. So I'll see you then. Eyes in the sky, gazing far into the night. I raise my hand to the fire, but it's no use. Cause you can't stop it from shining through. It's true, baby, let the light shine through. Oh, man, guys, I just want to point out this absolutely terrific parking job I did. Look at this. I mean, that is just a beautiful parking job if I've never seen one. Like, that right there is seriously no joke at all. Alrighty, guys, here we are again. Um, so all the audio for this video is either is well the scenes that are out here with all the action, like me dropping this or setting that down. That is filmed by the GoPro. So if audio is a little bit off. I'm sorry. That is the best I can do. Hopefully, you guys can see quite a bit. Um. You know what? When you're out here in the pitch black on the countryside, it's freaky as heck. Get over their fear. The, the beautiful, the outside, the wilderness is way, 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 way more beautiful than having to sit inside and stay at home simply because you're too afraid to go out. Alrighty guys, so if I hold my flashlight like this and I illuminate my camera, you guys can see that this is the accomplishment I'm going for. Hopefully you guys can see that. I have this river flowing down right through here. And it goes to that tree we were just talking about earlier. Alrighty guys, so when you're out here on location, there's a couple things you have to take into consideration. The first thing to remember is focal length changes the time, maximum time you have to take an image. If I want to shoot the stars without any star trails, which means the stars will move through the image, I don't want any of that. On a 50mm lens, I have approximately 8 seconds of exposure time on a full frame camera. 
Um, it's a lot of math involved in this, but on 24mm, I have around 15 to 20 seconds of maximum shutter time. Pretty much what this means is, the maximum shutter time I have to order to take a picture without the stars moving too much in order to create a star trail is no more than 20, 15 to 20 seconds on a full frame camera on a 24mm lens. And the wider and wider you go, the more and more time you have to actually take a picture of the stars. So keep that in consideration. The wider you go, the more time you have to collect more light. Tip number two, ISO um, will create grain in your image. So try to keep a uh, low ISO in between 16 and 6400. This is relatively um, very noise free if you're on a full frame camera, um, specifically the D750 or Canon 60 Mark II. Those handle noise incredibly well. Noise ruins an image and makes it hard to recover details. Your dynamic range goes blah when you have high ISOs. Uh, key number three, um, wider apertures equal more light letting in. However, they also make focusing harder as things kind of become fishy when you're focusing on f1.4 or lower. So try to keep an aperture of f1.8 to f2 or 3.5. Um, the widest aperture you can go is probably the best, unless it's f1.4 and your lens kind of suffers when you open it up that wide. Keep that in mind. Guys, so I have finished taking pictures of that stuff down there. I don't know if you can actually see that. And what I'm doing now though, is I'm taking my camera and I'm pointing it up towards um, some constellation up there of stars. I don't know the name of it. Please forgive me guys. I'll show it to you on the photo right here. It's this constellation here. Um, now it's kind of the clouds are coming in at an angle like this and they're swooshing across the sky which looks really cool. Um, you can take this picture anywhere on it, honestly guys. Um, but the clouds at the horizon level over there where I was originally taking pictures of they came up too high and it's blocking out the stars. So I'm just trying to take a picture here then I'll go inside and I'll edit the photos. So alright guys I think I want to wrap this up. Let's go ahead and get back to the editing lab and I'll see you there.